not tuned in to the Alliance Vlog Podcast. Shame on you! Shame on you! My name is Ella Indy, and I'm one half of the NWA Women's World Tag Team Champion. And I'm Kendra Page, the other half of the NWA World Women's Tag Team Champion. And you better go listen to the Alliance Vlog Podcast, period. You're a Are you ready? Power. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! What we've got here is failure to communicate. I'm building an alliance. God bless the internet. Okay, let's party. It's showtime. It's time for the Alliance Guys Podcast, with your hosts Kevin Frazier, Jaden, DKM, and Jay Cal. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Alliance Guys Podcast, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, your premier source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. My name is Jay Cal, and this gentleman is... His name is DKM. We are two-thirds of the Alliance guys, the OG Alliance guys. And uh, DK, how are you doing today? Awesome. That's that's amazing. That's uh, that's quite uh, amazing. <laughs> I'm always surprised about how many people jump onto the live stream uh, via the X app. Now, it's cool that you're watching on Twitter, but uh, we prefer you here on YouTube so we can interact with you guys. But if you uh, decide to leave comments... Feel free to drop them in, and we will get to them as soon as we can. Uh, again, we every Thursday, DK, Jaden, and myself, Jaden should be with us shortly, uh, talk all things NWA and, and pro wrestling. Actually, is Jaden, Jaden's got a show tonight, an event tonight. Does he? Now that I'm, I'm not sure. Huh. No, I barely know what day of the week it is anymore. Well, hold that thought. You're, you're lucky I actually show up to any of these. Uh, yes, and I and I do appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> and I don't mean lucky because it's lucky to have me. I mean lucky because you're lucky. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some uh, live updates from the event. Uh, we're still waiting for people to join the, the chat. Uh, we've got... Uh, got a few people still straggling in. Uh, we didn't get the show... Uh, information up till earlier today uh because uh, i was on the road most of the day whiner i'm i'm not complaining it just i didn't have access to the internet i was on the road well it be that way sometimes out of curiosity you hear any uh, gossip about wrestling lately any rumors any innuendo wrestling I don't know. It's been kind of a slow week, hasn't it? Yeah. Hey, Noob's in the house. What's up, Noob? What's going on? Yo, Noob. It's up to everyone in the chat. Again, uh, your comments are appreciated and welcome. So uh, throw them up there. We'll re respond. We'll read them. Uh, unless they're, <laughs> unless it's uh, demonetized Mike doing it, and then probably not. True. Yeah, okay. Now we're starting to get our audience trickling in. I was kind of holding up here because I was like, well, there's nobody uh, nobody here yet. But now we've got our audience coming in. So welcome one and all. Again, I'm Jay Cal. This is DKM. Uh, tonight we're going to do a little bit of NWA talk. We're going to talk about uh, some of the comments uh, that were released, uh, I guess, regarding a, a certain video. Something happened with a video. I don't know. I've been out of the oh, loop. Lord. The first thing I think we should talk about, though, DK, and I think this is uh, kind of exciting, especially if you've been following the NWA as it uh, has pursued new territories in the late last 2023. Uh, welcome to members uh, last year. Then, of course, NWA Chicago earlier this year. Um, and I can't tell you for sure that this is going to lead to that. But we know that Mr. William Patrick Corgan will be making his debut at uh, Crossfire Wrestling, their independent uprising, I guess, what is that, uh, 18? V? Is that uh, what that is? Oh, you got a fire. Mm -hmm. Apparently we do. 
Uh, I would assume that's a X B I I. So that would be eighteen, right? Yes. We didn't. They didn't teach us Roman numerals where I went to school. Hey, what's up, Willie Bowen? Welcome into the chat. But uh, I find that very interesting. Uh, that uh, again. The boss is heading to KFW. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, Crossfire Wrestling uh, runs their events out of Searville, uh, Tennessee. Um, the uh, The original owners of Crossfire Wrestling oh, were the parents of uh, Kenzie and Kylie uh, Page. And so uh, the two sisters are now running the uh, promotion. And up at their next uh, upcoming event, event you will see kenzie and kylie take on the carnies in a mixed tag match also on that match the or also at that event the southern six will be there carrie morton and silas mason and then the main event which is an interesting matchup not one that i think i'd ever wanted to see before but the crossfire wrestling champion is none other than uh, juventud guerrera he'll be defending that title against joey janella and that's not necessarily a matchup I thought I would want to see, but, um, you know, moving to Guerrero getting bookings in, in Tennessee is sounds wild to me. What about you, DK? What are your thoughts on that? That's very weird. Not only is it not something I thought I'd ever want to see, I'm still not sure it's something I'd ever want to see. Uh, I do have a question for you. Yeah. For all like you to- all you geography based people. So where is this promotion in location to like uh, Joe Casana's promotion? That's a great question. Let me see if I could actually look. Um, I'm going to, how do you spell it again? <laughs> I'm not very good. Severville? Severe. S- <laughs> it's S something. Yeah, that's all right. I got it. Um, all right, so I'm going to go here to Google Maps. Google Maps, don't fail me now. All right, so Searville, Tennessee is, uh, let's see. Jeez. Um, that's near Seymour, near Gatlinburg. Knoxville. Uh, it's not too far from Knoxville. Yeah, not too far from Knoxville. Um and we know that most recently, um, uh, Joe Kazana had kind of ran, he ran Kingston, and uh, I think he's a little bit further west. I would guess. I don't know where Kingston is. Uh, all right. Well, let's see. You can basically break Tennessee into three parts. Memphis, Nashville, and Knoxville. There's about an hour's an hour difference between Kingston and Searville. And then uh uh where's their where are they running next? Uh, I have that graphic here too. Uh they are running in uh Harriman. Harriman. So let me look up Harriman. <laughs> I know this is great, uh this is great podcast material, but you know. Well, I do think it's interesting to they're basic. All right. About an hour I, difference there, too. Kingston is on the west side of Knoxville, and Seaverville's on the east side of Knoxville. Seaverville being a little bit closer, it looks. Yeah. And that, that's the only thing because, you know, people go, is he going? Is he doing another territory? Yeah, is he doing another territory? I'm like, well, that seems like. They would be awfully close together if they are. Dave Scooby points out that uh, Searville is basically Dollywood area and Tennessee, the eastern Tennessee area. And I mean, look, it's only about an hour an hour away from Kingsport and uh, an hour away from Harriman, where uh, Joe Kazan will be will be running the same night. They'll be running the same night on April the twenty sixth. Uh, so it's not. Um, I'm not sure what that what that means for Joe Kazan and promotions. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, I mean anything. It's not like they're drawing, you know, it's not like they're both running in the heart of Knoxville trying to draw the same 10,000 fans. No, but they are, They, you know. But they are close that, together. <laughs> is it unheard of for you to travel an hour to go to an independent show? 
well, maybe me, but okay. <laughs> but yes, an average the, you could in Texas, you could find the same a lot of the same people in South Fort Worth as you could in North, you know, South Fort Worth suburbs as in North Dallas suburbs and stuff like that. You'll there there's about a hundred people who will go basically to any of them. I know in my neck of the woods, like uh, I, I live further east from Los Angeles. So although we do have some wrestling in San Diego County and we do have wrestling in the Inland Empire where I'm at, uh, if I want to go see championship wrestling from Hollywood, I need to drive about an hour and a half to get to those events. If I want to go see, uh, uh, well, just about any 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 promotion in Los Angeles is usually about an hour to two hour drive. So it, it is not uh, what I consider close. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean... Um, if they are going to add them as a territory, which uh, no one's confirmed that, no one said that specifically. No. Uh, does this does this hurt either promotion? Does it hurt? Does it? I don't think anything hurts the NWA at this point if they're just adding more affiliates. But does it hurt uh, Joe Kazana with being an hour and a half away from uh, uh, what was their competition? Now their partner. Well, the. Oh. This is one of those tracks. Does it hurt in that they're going after the same fans? Probably not. I'm going to say. I, I'm going to say they probably both pull far more locally. And splash myself with uh, stuff. And, uh, you know, far more locally than they do necessarily an hour away or whatever. I mean, we saw a joke, you know, the, what was it, the Bobby Eaton Arena or what, whatever. I mean, you know, there weren't 5,000 people in there. No. And and I don't mean that as an insult. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to show something. You're, you're probably not overall competing, but where it can hurt is if you're trying to get value out of the NWA letters. Well, maybe I can pick up some people from Knoxville with the end of, you know, if I'm using the NWA letters. But they can also see the NWA in, uh, what was it, Seaverville, whatever we called it. Yes. Yeah. You know, they can also see it in Seaverville. Well, if they're seeing it in Seaverville, then, you know, that might be a little bit closer to them if they're on that side of town or, you know, whatever. But maybe they can go there. And then, you know, like, what do you, you know, do you have the NWA Southeast Championship in, why does that thing keep going off? I'm going to start shooting people. Uh, the boy's cooking. Yeah, something, something's going on. Uh, you know, do you, so you, do you have the Southeast Championship and then what do you have, uh, you know, an hour away? You know. That's the only thing. And again, we're not saying that Billy's showing up there to make them uh, to make them uh, territory. No, not not even in the slightest. Uh, I did while you were talking. I did take a look on the map and um, you know other cities that Joe Kazana Promotions have ran besides Kingsport. Uh, they've also ran Cofield. They ran Sweetwater. And they've run Decatur. Now, Decatur is maybe the furthest out, about almost two hours away, an hour and 48 minutes, depending on traffic, of course. And then, uh, but Cofield and Sweetwater are all within an hour and a, uh, an hour or so distance of uh, the destination of that, uh, of uh, Seaverville, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So it, it's just interesting to think about it. And, and to your point, DK, like maybe they share a, um, share the championship maybe maybe this is an idea to have the two promotions run more hand in hand considering that uh you know they don't have to run against each other they can pick all you know if it's more coordinated they can run opposite weekends so that they're not you know booking on top of each other obviously the 26th uh you know corgan will be uh with uh, crossfire but that's also the same night that uh that uh 
Joe Kazana Promotions is running, but going forward, I mean, they can pick different dates, so they're not right. competing for and, the same audience. But, you know, and then that's the same thing I'm talking about. You know, well, is there an issue? Well, you know, you're the NWA president's in a non-NWA territory when there's going to be an NWA territory an hour away. <laughs> right. right. So, and, you know, and there's optics and stuff like that. Yes. But, you know, I, I don't know what's happening. And, you know, if they join, I'm cool with it. It's just one of those things that's interesting to think about on the business end and, I'm sorry, I have a business degree, so I tend to think on things. <laughs> well, and I think the, the interesting part, too, is, um, you know, the, the the diverse talent. So we know that Joe Kazana uses the Southern Six. That's that's a given. We know in the past that he's used talent from Pretty Empowered. Uh, we also know that he has used, um, you know, some of the other talent from the NWA, uh, like a Jeremiah Plunkett or um, well, that's just off the top of my head. We know that uh, Crossfire has used, of course, Pretty Empowered quite frequently, Ella Envy, Kenzie Page. They've also used Carrie Morton and the other members of Southern Six. So it would kind of still be like um, an opportunity to still have those NWA Tennessee talents on their shows, but also like filter that through with their local teams as well. Like, uh, you know, uh, for this event that's happening um, on the 26th, for crossfire they're using the 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 carnies the carnies are uh former nwa southeast tag team champions back in the old uh bruce tharp era of the nwa and uh carrie awful and nick iggy uh i believe that's his name nick iggy uh have had a uh, even a cup of tea with the modern nwa they they were there for a few appearances but this could lead to an, an additional solid tag team joining the nwa and of course you know a talent like uh, I'm not saying that Juventud Guerrera is the end all be all, but I don't know. I think I'd be kind of excited to see Juventud Guerrera in an NWA Power episode, uh, maybe defending the Crossfire Championship. Maybe it's just me, but I think that'd be kind of cool to see uh, Juventud, if he, especially if he can still go. I hear you, and I don't have. Uh... Again, I. I'm not trying to make a huge deal out of this. I it's it's just interesting to think about and interesting to see how you know what affects what. And, yeah, and stuff. That's a, that's all. You know, just, I mean, like I said, in you know, Tennessee ran as three separate territories for a long time. You know, uh, after uh, especially after Jarrett split with. Uh, Goulas and before he bought out the rest of Goulas's yeah. territory for pennies on a dollar. But and, yeah, but yeah, you know, it was Memphis, it was Nashville, it was uh, it was Knoxville, and they were three different promotions, and they had three different champions and three different promoters and everything. So, what are your but, thoughts? What are your thoughts on uh, Hoovy challenging? Uh, 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 Joe Alonzo for that uh, NWA uh, World Junior Heavyweight Championship. I can't say because I haven't seen him in so long. I don't know what he. I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to see what he is in the ring today. I mean, I don't know how old he is. You know, let's be honest, it's been twenty years since uh, he was a thing in WCW. So we know he's not on the young side. No, but he was uh, he was young. Like him and Mysterio were very young when they started wrestling for ECW and later WCW. So I'm not saying that he is a young man by any stretch, but he I wouldn't be surprised to find out if he was in his very early 50s. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he's in his uh, mid 40s, but it's just. You know, and if he's still in his mid forties and he's still good in the ring, then I don't have a problem with it. If he's up in his fifties or more, and you know he has a hard time moving around the ring, then I might have some issues with it. Well, it's just like anything else, right? Like if you can go in the ring, I don't really care how old you are. Um, to a point, seen, yes. 
Uh, well, I mean, we've seen some older wrestlers uh, who have mobility issues, and then it's like, no, I'm not really interested in watching them wrestle anymore. But we've seen some, uh, you know, older wrestlers uh, who move in the ring great, fantastic. So, you know, I have no problem with them still competing at a high level. Right. And uh, uh, yeah, if he can go, then good. If he can't, then I don't want to know about it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's that type of thing. But um, I, I do want to. Th- I do want to throw out there uh, a congratulations to one half of the Crockett Cup winner, uh, Mark Briscoe. Like, no, oh, Mark, Mark Briscoe. Who won the ROH World Championship, a title his brother had held. So it was even on the same date that uh, his brother won the title, some uh, like I think 15 years later, maybe 10 years later. Yeah, that's crazy to think that's been that long since he held the world title. Now I have to double check because I don't. I feel like maybe I'm not saying something correctly. So now I'm going to double check what I just said. But uh, I mean, they it was some kind of date, but I don't remember what it was. So, but I mean, it's been a while. <laughs> there have been a lot of champions since Jay's second title run. Yeah, he won the title for the first time on April the fifth, twenty thirteen. And I believe Mark Briscoe won the title on uh, April the fifth, twenty twenty four. So yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty interesting. Mm. It's weird to think that Samoa Joe held that title. I mean, sorry, not Samoa Joe. Uh, that seems normal. It's weird to me to see Chris Jericho's name as a former uh, Ring of Honor World Champion. Yeah, and not even the good Chris Jericho. No. Uh, th- that's the sad part. And speaking of sad parts, were you sad or happy when Cody won the World Wrestling Entertainment Undisputed WWE Championship? And now that they've dropped Universal from the title, my my brother literally just texted me about ten minutes for the show and said, "Did you cry when Cody won? You Cody cry baby?" And no, I didn't cry. I'm not sad. I, I I'm an, a staunch Cody Rhodes supporter. Uh, he was a great NWA World Champion for his brief time as champion, and he is obviously somebody who um, is able to get a crowd to respond to him. He's able to sell tickets. He's able to move merchandise. He's able to, to draw, if you will, which is so crazy to me because, you know, he did start AEW along with the young bucks. And of course, Tony Khan, but it's so surprising to me that he left the company and the fans were so like anti Cody. And I don't feel like the character has changed at all from leaving uh, AEW to his uh, entrance into the WWE, and he's he's celebrated as a hero. He's celebrated as like a uh, you know, like a like a I don't know. He's celebrated as a superstar. When he first walked back in, it was a huge deal. Uh, the fans went crazy for him in his return to the WWE. They did this excellent job of telling a story about him finishing Dusty's story a year ago. And then he did not win the title. They put him through his own set of hard times and, and, and brought him to WrestleMania where we all thought there's no way they could have topped WrestleMania 39 in that moment where he could have won the title. And then you had WrestleMania 40 and it was, it just seemed like uh, it was a spectacle. It was a fun experience. I wouldn't say it was the greatest wrestling match of all time. I could have certainly used uh I would have preferred not to have so much interference in the match. Actually, I was impressed with how little interference there was in the match, considering it was just, you know, it was yeah. always hit for tact. Yeah, well, and then they threw out, like, again, the legends. Like, uh, you know, we had Undertaker, but I, I believe that was supposed to be Stone Cold. I think it changed at the last minute. Um, we had, uh, you know, John Cena come out. It was certainly something. Um, and, and I thought it was exciting. But I don't know that I would say that it was uh, the match I was hoping for. But I think the end result is what everyone was predicting, and that was uh, Cody 
concluding that story and now on to something new. I liked it. I'm glad he's the new world champion. I think he's the guy to be that. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I was wondering your thoughts on this because you got to it and I'm kind of curious. So a lot of people felt it was a big mistake not putting the title on him last year. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people felt it up until the point they put the title on him this year. I was one of them. I thought like that was the moment to do it. It was such a, a feel good moment. You know, he came back from the injury. He, it wasn't like, um, I don't know. Go, go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Now, would it have been as good and as awesome without a heel rock in there? Because I'm going to argue that a lot of people weren't overly interested in the match until Rock was going to be in it instead. And then that flipped, and they took advantage of the situation. They didn't have to ever fully explain what was going on. They flipped Rock heel, and, you know, the guy can talk. And, you know, look, there are fans that were still cheering, that were cheering him until they booed him or what he was doing. They would cheer him to come out, and then they'd boo him for whatever his thing was. But fans, I'm going to break something. And then, uh, you know, fans were fans were checking and, uh, you know, got really into this. And I don't know. I don't know that it would have been the same if Rock hadn't been there, which led to the first night main event to add more adversity to it and and everything. I, I think this was a better... I think they fell into it, but I think they fell into a better story that led to a better build which led to a more emotional moment. I mean, Samantha Irving could barely announce the winner. She had tears going out her eyes so fast. And uh, so I, I, I'm curious as to Matthew Underwood says it needed Rock because Roman was never there. Well, they were there about the same amount, actually. Rock was only there for like one or two episodes that Roman wasn't. I think just one, actually. And that was the Monday night one. But, uh, yeah. I mean, your thoughts, Mr. Uh, Mr. Callum. So, that's a, that's a very interesting way of, of propositioning it because I think... So, look, I think WrestleMania would have been an extravaganza regardless of who was involved. I feel like they were planning to, to have that... Uh, I think the end result was always going to be Cody winning the title at WrestleMania 40. I think uh, the way that it was built up, that's how it had to end. Otherwise, you kind of wasted a year of building up Cody for that reason. Um, I think you still would have had a lot of fans excited about it, but I think I think what sold it is when you did put The Rock there, right? It wasn't the common fan who was excited about that. It was Hollywood that was excited about it. It was you know, ESPN, now they're covering it. Now, now they care, you know, now sports illustrated cares. Now the local television uh, sports reports are talking about it because they're featuring the rock. Now you've got the, the variety talking about it because again, it's, it's Hollywood. It's, there's more impact on it. So yeah, I think you're right. I think that it did garner more interest, but I don't think it garnered more interest from uh, the WWE fans, I think it might have garnered more interest from the ancillary fans, the, you know, the, the, the casual fans. And then I think, uh, you know, the press was really into it because, again, of who The Rock is, what he's been doing and where he is today. I think it brought a lot of resurgence back. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think it changed the fact that, you know, 
Johnny Johnny Monday night who's watching Raw every Monday is always going to watch Raw regardless of who was there. He's always going to watch WrestleMania regardless of who was there. But I think it brought in a lot more additional fans who might not have been tuning in because of it. But I don't think that I don't think the Rock being there changed your ticket sales. I don't think it changed uh, the amount of people who were going to be there live in Philadelphia. I think uh, I think it was always going to be a sellout. It was always going to be a good crowd. But you're right. I think the Rock definitely added an extra element to it. I'll grant you the sellout. I think more eyeballs were on it on Peacock or whatever streaming service across the world it may have been on. Yeah. I mean, I I think it was. And uh, in one of his other things, uh, you know, I've heard people complain, you know, about the bloodline rules and, you know, just seemed like a normal match and, you know, they're kind of making a lot of it and there wasn't much to it and everything. And it's like, okay, I'm going to tell you people something that's going to sound as a shock coming from me. Okay. This wasn't a perfect match. No. This was a perfect WrestleMania moment. Yes. Okay. This, this, forget about everything else. What do casual fans want? Do casual fans want to sit and watch a 30 minute technical match? No, I do. Do they? No. This, Gave them, Cody's about to win. Here's Jimmy. Jay sends Jimmy through a table off the ramp. They're gone. Here's Solo. Cody still kicks out. Here's John Cena, the guy Solo just put out of commission a few months ago. <clears throat> Here's Rock. And apparently Rock's the only person on the planet who can see John Cena. <laughs> And then here, what WWE wanted to be Steve Stone Cold Austin, he, they can't get him. So we got the dong and the Undertaker. Oh. Did, did you hear the crowd? Yeah. When that thing went? Yes. Was he dressed like the Undertaker? No. Nope. Did he pick him up and just do a choke slam on him? Yes. There he went. More black outlook. This was WrestleMania moment. When my son and I went to WrestleMania, I think it was 32, the first one that was in uh, Arlington at AT AT&T Stadium. Uh, There was the women's match, the three-way with, uh, who was it? Becky, Charlotte. Rhonda. No. Uh, Sasha. And that's important because Sasha Banks was led to the ring by Snoop Dogg. And I had bought those tickets and I'd asked William if he wanted to go and he said yes. And so then when the night came, I go, hey, you want to, I go, you ready or whatever? And he's like, yeah. Or, you know, so and he told me, he told me when there, when we were there, he goes, you know, originally some friends had asked me to come you know, do something with them. He goes tonight, but I told them I had already promised you this. So, you know, I, I was going to keep my word and go. I go, well, thank you. I go, and besides, we saw Snoop Dogg. Who did <laughs> they see? I go, who did they see? And we both together go, nobody. Okay, I promise right. you, the only thing that William really remembers about WrestleMania 32 is Snoop Dogg coming out. Not a wrestling fan. I mean, he'll go with me occasionally, but he's not yeah. a wrestling fan. I mean, he he knows that somebody won the title. He doesn't know Roman Roman beat uh, Triple H, you know, or right, whatever. Right, right. You know, he he doesn't remember anything else, but he remembers Snoop Dogg. And we were talking about it just the other night, and that's that's what you remember. He goes, "Yep." He goes, "We saw Snoop Dogg." <laughs> and, you know that that is what this is about. Mm-hmm. This isn't about great wrestling. Sorry to break the hearts of a lot of people. 
Yeah. This is about moments. This is about something happening. That's what made this a quote unquote great WrestleMania, one of the best. I mean, half the matches on the show were, you know, really. Especially the Uso versus Uso. Oh, God, that was just bad. <laughs> but it didn't matter. I promise you the only thing anybody who attended and watched Night 2 remembers will remember in five, six years is how it felt in that place when Cody pinned Roman. Or when the gong went off and Undertaker appeared. Right, right. They, they, nothing else in their life will matter to them. (laughs) Yeah. You know, as far as WrestleMania was concerned. That that was it. That was the moment. And that's what they did. And by the way, I also want to note something else here. For all those freaking morons, and Cody was one of them, who said... Oh, you know, we've kind of advanced past heel face. You know, you know, that we don't necessarily need that trope anymore. We've kind of gotten past that. Cody was the Uber baby face. Rock was the Uber heel. Yeah. And Roman was the guy everybody wanted to see get beat. And and that's why that place exploded when Cody got the pin. Everybody in the stands knows wrestling's not real. All right. The, the, there weren't people there that thought, oh, well, this is, you know, they, they weren't the, they aren't the stereotypes. WrestleMania does not draw your stereotype wrestling fan. You know, that's why there were celebrities out in the card, like you might see at, you know, UFC 300 and stuff. Right. Or like you'll probably see at the heavyweight title unification between Tyson Fury and, uh, can't remember the other guy's name, Music, Cusack or whatever his name is. And uh, it's, this is a totally different situation. And whether you love them or hate them or whether you love or hate Triple H or whether you love and hate WWE, none of it matters. Ain't one soul in wrestling that doesn't want what happened last weekend. Right. So what are your thoughts, Mr. Kaylee? Uh, No, yeah, what you you hit it on the head. Um, I feel like in wrestling clearly defined roles of faces and heels certainly determine, make it easier for storytelling. I know Dave Lagana was big on this and, and the NWA uh, still echoes that sentiment. Oh, that they're, you know, shades of gray, real life. There's shades of gray. Sometimes good people do bad things. Sometimes bad people do good things. Yeah. Okay. But you know what? I don't go to wrestling for reality, right? I go to wrestling for fantasy. I go for wrestling for storytelling. I'm not trying to invest, um, into pro wrestling like I do, like a, a cop drama or something, you know? Just give me a good guy to cheer and a bad guy to boo, some popcorn and some cool wrestling moves, and I'm good. Um, with that being said, to what Matthew Underwood just said, yeah, Cody, right now I don't think there's a bigger baby face in pro wrestling than Cody Rhodes. You might have argued Sting at the height of his popularity. Uh, you might even say Ricky the Dragon Steamboat when he was in to be a world's heavyweight champion. But I don't think there's a bigger face in the world of pro wrestling right now. They wanted John Cena to be that. They tried to get John Cena to be that, but even as good as a dude that guy was, all the Make-A-Wish Foundation stuff, Cody's out there kissing babies, and people love him for it. I don't think there's a bigger star. I mean, one for Roman. Oh, yeah. that Well, yeah, Roman, Roman was kind of a different cat. And I don't think they ever really understood how to use Roman until late in the game. And I think that's why it took so long for him to get over. And and here's something for you, people. This is when you catch lightning in a bottle. I'm sure a lot of people have forgotten. That title reigned by Roman Reigns at four years or almost four years or however long it was. 
it was supposed to be like a few weeks. He was supposed to he was supposed to lose the title back to either uh, to uh, Bray Wyatt or lose it back to or lose it to uh, Braun Strowman. The original the original plan was basically to was basically to take it off take it off and put it you know on one of those two. I, I think they knew who I just don't remember who but that was originally supposed to be a short ring hmm. I didn't know that yeah and it would uh, and so I don't remember what happened I I think the fans were finally reacting to Roman in a way they saw. (laughs) Yeah. And I think they were, the fans were reacting to Roman in a way that they'd always wanted him to, they had always wanted the fans to react to Roman, which just as a heel, not as a face. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, Roman could return as one of the biggest faces ever. He was not a full time person. But, you know, he, he could now because I always say, you know, you, you, you love them as much as you love them or as much as you hate them, you can do the opposite. And so that's, that's, where, that's where you go with that. So we, so we have a new uh, WWE world champion, or I guess a new undisputed WWE champion and a new world champion. And the title that is almost as prestigious as the U.S. and Intercontinental title currently held by <laughs> Damian Priest. Well, what about, um, you know, the, the show crowned uh, three Latin American, uh, I don't know the, the right term, Hispanic heritage, uh, new um, champions, of course, Damian Priest being uh, from Puerto Rico. Cody Rhodes' mom is from Cuba, and Bailey is, um, uh, I believe she is a descendant from Mexico. So, um, well, of course, uh, Austin Theory. Well, yes, the title belts do suck. Uh, Austin Theory, of course, got one of the tag team championships. What's his afraid. nationality? I, I mean, his nationality might be uh, American, but I think his heritage is. I think he has some Latin American in his heritage. Okay, okay. I think don't, don't, don't take it for, don't you know? Bet your life on it. Sure. Um. Before we get to the next part, uh, how soon do you need to take your break? In about 15 minutes. Okay. Let's still talk about uh, a little bit more about the WWE, what we saw this week. Um, Of course, uh, there was the CM Punk interview from last week, just ahead of WrestleMania with Ariel Hawani. There was? Uh, Huh? There was? Yeah, uh, and, and uh, I thought you were getting on me for the enunciation of his last name. I tried really hard. Um, <laughs> uh, there was a lot of talk about that, and uh, that essentially goaded, uh, you know, uh, AEW to air the footage from the all-in brawl, the brawling, if you will, that we finally got to see the footage, um, you know, and it wasn't, uh, it was, it was kind of, deflating i saw the footage uh, i didn't see it live but i saw it on social media shortly after it was released on aew television uh it's funny if you went to cage match and looked at the results and they showed uh they showed or no, I'm, I'm sorry not cage match but forbes magazine which listed the results from the uh, uh wednesday night program they said that uh, cm punk, cm punk got a victory over uh jungle boy uh and i just thought that was so peculiar such a weird way to I know they were trying to dunk on on the WWE. I think they were trying to uh, show that CM Punk wasn't a good guy. What was your take on the video, DK? I mean, obviously, we're only seeing one side of the story. There's no audio that accompanies it. Um, 
there's not a lot of context there. It just basically is what it is. But what was your take from that video? All right. Let me break this down into sections. First, there was the interview. And in the interview, Punk gave his side of the story. Right. Okay. And, you know, I think to nobody's surprise, Punk's side of the story favored Punk. Sure. All right. Then they announced that they're going to show it. In what is almost immediately considered by most people to be some kind of trick. Oh, they're not really going to show it. I didn't think they were going to show it. I was they're surprised. Gonna, they're going to have a comedy skit. To which so led the, the Young Bucks. Yes. The Young Bucks to say, no, it's going to be the actual footage, which led to... Uh, Tony Khan also saying, no, it's, it's going to be real. And they basically acknowledged it was a ratings ploy because they're getting ready to go into negotiations. Yeah. To resign. And the ratings have sucked recently. And, okay. So that's the setup. Okay, so when you listen to Punk's interview, and I'm going to be paraphrasing here, but he basically claims he went to Tony Khan and said, do something about this. Right. And Tony's like, what? He goes, I'm not going to tell you what. Just do something. Yeah. You know. Do something or else I'll have to do something. Yeah, he you goes, like the way I do it. Right. That's what he says. He goes, if you don't if you don't handle it, I'll handle it, and you're not going to like the way I handle it. And look, did something need to be done? Uh, maybe to a small extent. I think. I think Punk should have been told, chill out. You know, dude, chill out. We'll say something to him. And then when he came through, I think it was, you know, they should have had someone, Tony should have told him, cut that crap out. Yeah. We don't We don't need that. Yeah. You know, you're just going to piss him off, and then that's going to lead to another incident, and we don't need it. So just cut the crap out. That was all his deal. Well, apparently Tony didn't do that. Or nobody was doing that. Because he was back there. But, you know, the video shows, like, what, 20 seconds? The video shows, you know, uh, Jack Perry back there. Shows Samoa Joe facing. Shows Punk coming up to him. Now, it's, you know, closed circuit TV. There's probably... No audio was played, and I doubt there was any audio on it, just because uh, Closer TV often doesn't have audio. And uh, so all we see is that in a very quick sequence, Punk pushes Perry... Now, I couldn't tell well enough from it if to Perry move back towards him or Punk just, if they were just close enough, uh, Punk dr- grabs him in a choke. Joe comes up to him, pulls Perry away. People are, pull- Chris Hero, and people are pulling Punk away. As they're pulling away, uh, Punk throws a wild punch. I don't think it hit anybody or anything. It's just kind of out there. And took six seconds. In the world of pro wrestling, I'm sorry, not the biggest deal. No. You see Punk yelling at somebody who's off camera. We're assuming it's Tony. They separate and go their way. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people are going, 
Tony Khan feared for his life off that. Well, he probably freaked out by it. I don't, you know, I can't say whether he did or didn't fear for his life. But then later, both uh, Khan and uh, what's his name? Their little lackey, Meltzer. You know, said, so, oh, well, this video doesn't include when Tony feared from his life. Well, as far as I could tell, as far as I could tell, it was everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, because Punk was walking off when it happened. Are you saying Punk came back and threatened just him? There because was. I, I mean, that that segment that happened right before the match between Joe and, and CM Punk. Hence, while Joe was sitting there in the gorilla waiting waiting to go out. Right. And, uh, so, yeah, I mean, there might have been more that we didn't see. But, like, if you had more, why wouldn't you just show it? Like, what? show it. Right. And so a lot of people question whether because, I mean, you do see Punk yelling to somebody. That's probably Tony Khan based on where they were in the grill position. Yeah. And, you know, the number of monitors and everything. And so, okay. Now, there, I've heard a lot of people go, well, if that happened in a work environment, you know, it's never okay to choke one of your coworkers or something like that. And it's like, well, damn, I wish it was because I would have choked a lot of my <laughs> But uh, second, it's like, uh, I'm, this is a different world. Things have, you know, Chris Jericho was knowing, known for getting into confrontations backstage. Uh, Goldberg, uh, Lesnar, and a couple of others who are escaping me right at the moment. But, you know, he was said to have gotten into a few things backstage. And people used to tell me that, oh, all the wrestlers, you know, you know, were so glad that Jericho was stand, standing up to, you know, people and stuff like that. Like, and then, of course, you start learning more later. And it's like, oh, most of them, he was just being an asshat. Yeah. And so, uh, was it a terrible, horrible thing? I'm sorry, no, it wasn't. I mean, he, he was basically right in that. I mean, they did have to pull him apart. It wasn't just Joe coming up to him going, oh, 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 punks. Uh, I, I do not think this is appropriate, and I think you should release him. Please release that young gentleman. Yes, you know, please release Mr. Perry. Uh, I think he knows not what he hath done. <laughs> and so, you know, I don't know. I, I think it was stupid to show it. I don't think much happened in it. I mean, was there? And here's the other problem. Unfortunately, wrestling's kind of got like comic books and fiction things where you're trying to figure out canon you know what really happened what doesn't happen or whatever yeah i mean the most dangerous place in wrestling is backstage in aew they film segments all the time of wrestlers getting attacked yeah and in nxt i think it's the parking lot yes you know nxt parking lot aew backstage very dangerous places for wrestlers and it's, oh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Stupid? You know, I, I mean, should it have happened? No. Did it happen? Yes. Was it worth firing him over? Well, he claims he was going to quit anyway. So it was that he'd asked for his release and it was denied. So, Sure. I mean, that's the most asinine thing to me is like, um, you've got, you, you, you've, you've got CM Punk who at the time was the top merchandise seller for, um, all elite wrestling. And if he wasn't number one, he was in the top 10, he was selling tickets. They had a lot of people show up at those events. Um, how could they not have made this work? How, you know, when we talk about money, right. Uh, in the world of business, money is everything. And if you can't make money, I don't need to make friendships in business. I need to make money. And that's how the business continues to, 
to thrive is I have to have more business. And CM Punk was this guy who was generating income from he was a mover. He was he had people show up to his events, whether it be it wasn't just in Chicago. It was uh, any of the collision events they had on attendance there. Anytime he was advertised, people showed up. And, you know, I get that it was might have been an unsafe work environment or maybe he didn't get along with a certain group of people. How could they not have predicted that and figured out uh, an appropriate action to take place? How could they not have said, OK, we're going to remove all of these elements from collision and this is just going to be the CM Punk show. And it's only going to be people who get along with CM Punk. They could have made that work. And same thing with pay-per-views. Why was he even near Jungle Boy? Why was Jungle Boy even near him? If there was animosity already there, why why did they let that happen? Because at the end of the day, it cost AEW a lot of money and it cost a revenue generator who went directly to the competition and immediately once he joined the WWE started raking in merchandise sales there. It, it's it's honestly it's so asinine to me that ring of, that AEW could let that go. Hell, put him on Ring of Honor. Make him the Ring of Honor guy. Make the whole show about, you know, CM Punk and Ring of Honor and and, and have it completely divorced from AEW. The fact that they let that guy go, and I get it, he's not the world's greatest wrestler anymore. He's not. But he could still talk you into a match. He could still sell merchandise. He could still put butts in seats. How do you screw that up? Well, and again, you know, this is where you end up going back to Punk's interview. And you go, he was probably more right than not. Yeah. But they're not willing to, you know, do something. And, uh, you know, look, it's easy to take pot shots at punk. Sure. I mean, uh, he seems to have been a miserable person most of his wrestling career. And so, uh, was he right for most of his stuff? I don't know. Really, I wasn't watching WWE when Punk was big. I when I actually started watching WWE again, Punk lost to Rock. So I was never really in on that. Uh, Noob, I pointed out earlier that it's not uncommon for uh, there not to be audio in closed in a, a closed circuit TV. So that, that I don't think it's that they muted the sound. I, I don't think there was any recorded. And so uh, please don't, Dave. Okay. Dave, uh, David is joking. This is not news. This is David joking. Breaking news. Billy Corgan reaches an agreement with Nick Khan to sell the NWA for four million dollars. Not yeah. that's not not that's not real. Uh at this point, is the NWA worth four million dollars to Nick Khan? Well, he overpaid for ROH, so that's Tony Khan. Oh Nick Khan, yeah, sorry. Um yeah, no. No, trust me, if they bought it, they'd probably sell they'd probably pay uh, a hot dog and a handshake. A hot a hot dog. You can either get a hot dog, chips, or drink, you can get two of the you can get two of the three. That's probably how they'd pay for the NWA. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna let you go take your break and I'm gonna talk about some United Wrestling Network stuff. Never heard of them. All right. So well, well go ahead. You're still here? Or not. Okay, so uh, earlier in the show, our pal Matthew Underwood asked about uh, the United Wrestling Network, and I'm I'm, I'm trying to find it up. Uh, speaking of old folks, are we watching the Turnbuckle UWN main event from this week? Do we know when there's new content from Marquez? So the thing about that, Matthew Underwood, is uh, obviously the uh, United Wrestling Network went back into production back in February with two events back-to-back. They did February. They did uh, February and March, uh, but they did not. Let me rephrase that. They did January and February, but they did not film anything in the month of March, nor will they be filming anything in the month of April uh, because of some of the uh, cut cost-cutting measures that they had to do to try to keep the show viable and and producing new episodes. They had to take a little bit of time off 
uh, in between. Now, they did do a live event in March. I don't believe that live event will be televised. It wasn't uh, filmed for the United Wrestling Network to distribute uh, on their TV program, but I do, I do believe there were cameras recording, so I don't know. Maybe that content might find its way onto their YouTube channel. But as of right now, that uh, was not released either. I think what we're going to see next from the United Wrestling Network, again, they're kind of showing off right now. They're showing you their hands. And I, I, I can't speak for David Marquez, but we know that there is this growing relationship between the reality of wrestling and championship wrestling from Hollywood, such that we've seen multiple stars from reality of wrestling appear in United Wrestling Network programming. Uh, even most recently, talents from Memphis have a uh, touchdown in reality wrestling. Um, so you're seeing some crossover talent. Of course, Danny Limelight has become a regular for uh, reality of wrestling. We have seen Danny Limelight also defending his title, the United Wrestling Network World Championship in Puerto Rico. Uh, so you're seeing a lot more of these matches uh, being showcased on championship wrestling and they're doing that again because they're trying to cut back on some production costs while trying to still have new content uh in the works so they're doing they're spending some time highlighting what's happening in the united wrestling network so that when they do start filming again which i believe is uh this month i think it's back it's in a couple of weeks that they'll have some uh they'll, they'll have the ability to start uh producing more live events uh, shortly after that. Now, I know Dave Marquez has his hand in a lot of things right now. I know that they have, uh, they have, uh, they're they're in talks and negotiations with some stuff that's happening in Texas. There's negotiations and stuff in Australia. There's negotiations and stuff in uh, in Florida. There's things that are percolating, uh, but nothing has come to fruition yet. Uh, Dave Marquez has said very publicly that there's a lot of stokes in the fire and if any one of these just catches the right way uh they're going to be in business but uh, until that happens of course they're, they're kind of just waiting around now uh it's a chess game billy and david in the territories they collab join the alliance or the union whoever gets ccw wins we'll see that's the thing like what you're saying matthew underwood is um uh, first of all, CCW is a vessel unto itself. They don't need the United Wrestling Network. They don't need the NWA. It's much like Ohio Valley. No, Ohio Valley doesn't need the NWA at this point. No. Uh, is their production great? No, it's not. But I don't think that adding the NWA letters to Ohio Valley or to CCW instantly upgrades production. Um, it just doesn't. Uh, if they want to pay for that, you know, obviously, look, Dave Marquez knows how to produce wrestling. He's been doing it for a very long time. We see, uh, you know, the fruits of his labor still in the NWA. Of course, uh, his protege, uh, Billy, um, is the director for the NWA programming. So those some of the cameramen actually work for both the NWA and the United Wrestling Network. So it's. I don't feel like they're out there competing for the same market, right? I don't think they're competing for territories. I think the territories are out there calling for these names. Now, we talked about it earlier tonight. The NWA sounds like there are things happening with Crossfire Wrestling. Uh, but, you know, I, I can't get into all the details with where, where United Wrestling Network is going. But they're out there, too. There are having There are companies who are contacting... United Wrestling Network about working together. You know, of course, there's Memphis, right? There's uh, there's Memphis. There is uh, Derby City, which is in Kentucky. Then you have Championship Wrestling that films in Long Beach, and then uh, there's that uh, other independent promotion whose name I'm I'm not remembering at the moment, and I feel bad because I can't think of it. So now I'm going to try to look online to see if I can find it fast enough. But uh, truth be told, I probably won't. Um, but they are also uh, a part of the network. Uh, it's not listed. Let me see. Let me look one more other place. Uh, Derby City Wrestling. Oh, there's another one that I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, but yeah, there's um, like I said, there is there is more um, out there, and I know Marquez does have his his hand in a few things right now um but you know right now he's he's just trying to get he's just trying to get his program you know to be on the air full time and i don't mean to laugh at it, it it's a struggle he's you know 
Uh, Dave Marquez literally kept wrestling going during uh, the pandemic. During you know he was still running when the NWA wasn't. In fact, he became a vessel for the National Wrestling Alliance when they weren't running. Uh, but there are a lot of things that are still happening right now. And uh, like I said, there's a lot of stokes in the fire. Uh, you know, he's out in Florida right now trying to make things happen. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about the end, uh, the United Wrestling Network. I do feel like they have some things uh, coming together. And I'm saying a whole lot without saying a lot uh, because I can't really speak to what is going to happen next, but I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of work. I mean, obviously if he's airing matches from turnbuckle championship wrestling, or if they're airing matches from, uh, you know, if they're airing matches, uh, from IWA Puerto Rico, or if they're airing matches from reality of wrestling or, or any of this stuff, obviously that means that there's something, there's some sort of agreement, at least in play. Um, Given the players, could EC3 versus uh, QT Marshall be the main event supercard for a card at SummerSlam, which is in Cleveland, or as we call it, NWA Midwest? Absolutely. Uh, QT Marshall is still out there. I mean, he's a, he's a free agent, right? And uh, even though he is working with Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, um, he is still very much a free agent. So if he is... If he's available, I mean, why wouldn't they work with him? Why wouldn't the United Wrestling Network or the NWA work with QT Marshall? Um, I just think that's a, it's a no-brainer to do that. Um, yeah, just sorry. Now I'm just trying to look up something real quick. Uh, let me see. Um, let me see here. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What the heck? Sorry about that. I'm just trying to find out where on Memphis Wrestling. Um, of course, you know, they have a lot of... The, the Memphis Wrestling Channel does feature the United Wrestling Network stuff as well. And... Um, you know, at the last United Wrestling Network, they featured uh, talent from Booker T's Reality Wrestling and QT Marshall's Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. The episode includes Glacier, Scotty Riggs, QT Marshall, Booker T, Ricky Starks, and more. So, yeah, I mean, they are featuring these promotions. Obviously, there has to be some sort of agreement in play for them to share that footage. Otherwise, they couldn't. Uh, but, yeah, with QT Marshall, getting back to your question, Matthew Underwood, uh, you know, when he left AEW, he hadn't he hasn't signed exclusive with anybody yet. So wrestling for CCW or wrestling for Turnbuckle or wrestling for the NWA or wrestling United Wrestling Network, all of these are available options for him. So of course, if if uh, they do some sort of super card uh, surrounding SummerSlam for the NWA, uh, yeah, why not? Why not use QT Marshall? Um, Again, I think the biggest problem with EC3 and booking that 10 pounds of gold with EC3 is finding a not only a, a compatible uh, a compatible challenger, but somebody who can actually be built around. You know, they're bringing in Sam Adonis for the, the Crockett Cup to face EC3, but there's absolutely zero build to it. Now, of course, they're doing TV tapings this weekend. I don't see I, – I actually, I was on Twitter earlier today. I know that uh, Sam Adonis is not planning to be in, in those tapings. Uh, Sam Adonis is going to be in Mexico on Friday, uh, or maybe it's Saturday. Um, let's see. Where did I see it? Sorry. I'm, I'm Yeah, here it is. So Sam Adonis, he's actually wrestling uh, – He's wrestling in downtown LA on Friday. He's wrestling in Tijuana on Saturday. And then he's back in LA on the 14th. So he's not going to be at the TV tapings for the NWA, which, you know, that means that they can't build him up. So uh, James H. Jackson has asked, is West Coast Pro still affiliated? Yes, they are still somewhat affiliated. I don't believe it's United Wrestling Network, West Coast Pro, but they have done joint events together. 
Uh, their most recent outing was back in March at the uh, Irvine um, uh, Irvine Improv, uh, where they where they used to tape the Hollywood uh, last year, where they taped uh, Championship Wrestling. So yeah, they're still affiliated, but I don't think it's the way that it once was. Like uh, more like a, I think they're more like a brotherly relationship as a, instead of like a symbiotic relationship. And then Matthew Underwood goes, yeah, he's the CCW champ too. So CCW, NWA, Turnbuckle, and the UWN card. I Again, I don't expect UWN and the NWA to do anything jointly. Uh, but, you know, by way of if, if NWA books a United guy or vice versa, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. How you doing, DK? Oh, am I back? You are back. I'm doing okay. What are we talking about? So we were just talking about the United Wrestling Network, how they've been kind of uh, went back on hiatus for a brief uh, moment. Um, their, so their latest episodes of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood have been uh, featuring some matches from Reality of Wrestling, some matches from Puerto Rico, and even matches from Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. And uh, never, heard of them. never heard of TCW, huh? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Small job. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, um, like their last event uh, featured uh, Glacier, Scotty Riggs, QT Marshall, Booker T, Ricky Starks, and more. Scotty Riggs? Sure. I think he's working for Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. Isn't he the one that they did some kind of show about him getting back in shape? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking he is. I don't remember what the show was or whatever, but they, there was something about, you know, him starting out as an old slob and now he's an old, you know, cut dude or something like that. Yeah, uh, as I'm just kind of skimming through the reality of wrestling uh, episode, excuse me, the United, uh, the championship wrestling from a, I'll try that again. The most recently championship wrestling from Hollywood episode that aired this past Saturday, they, they featured a match from Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, a match with Jacob Fatu and Booker T on camera. Uh, you know, Jacob Fatu uh, supposedly has signed a deal with uh, the WWE. Um, I don't, and then I guess more wrestling from Q, uh, from Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. Yeah, so the, I don't really know what the deal is with this, uh, what's going on here. But I imagine that, uh, you know, they're not showing this footage without their permission. That's for sure. I, that's a big no-no. So, obviously, they have something going on with these companies for the United Wrestling Network. Cool. So, uh, and then, uh, so now going back to the NWA, of course, they are doing their TV tapings this Friday and Saturday in uh, in Tampa. Again, we've talked about that ad nauseum. Um, of course, we are right now currently in the uh, Hard Times uh, series of uh, the NWA Power, but uh, yeah, it's the Hard Times. Hard and Times. That's filmed back in March, but then we'll be heading to uh, Tampa this weekend, Friday, April the 12th, Saturday, April the 13th, and then that leads them to uh, the next event, which will be April the uh, 26th. Harem High School, Harem Heat, and we know that uh, William Patrick Corgan will be at the Crossfire Wrestling on April 26th as well. Then you also have the event that's coming up uh, in Chicago the on May the 3rd. That's the NWA Chicago Fire, as well as there is another uh, Exodus Pro event that's coming up very soon too. And then, of course, Crockett Cup where TK and I will finally meet up yet again and watch wrestling together. As soon as I, I find the tickets. As soon as you find the tickets? Yeah, you know, they're somewhere in the email I got. I still got to book a hotel. Otherwise, I'm crashing on your couch. The dogs will appreciate it. <laughs> One of them might sleep with you. Yeah, I'm a cuddler. Our pal Jeremy's in the house. Uh, Jeremy says, Dark Side of the Ring talked about Riggs during the Bagwell episode. 
Um, you know, I haven't been following the dark side of the ring stuff. I did watch the Owen Hart one, made me cry. Did watch the Brian Pillman one, also made me cheer eyed. Uh, did really don't really want to watch too much of it. I I like being happy, not sad. Whiner. What's a little bit of sadness between friends? Uh, there's a lot of bit of sadness when you're watching those. Um, one of the things we wanted to talk about tonight was, uh, of course, the NWA Women Tag Team Champions. Uh, we did see them most recently defend those titles on power against the former champions, Ella Envy and Kylie Alexa. But we let's do a three falls match. Yeah, <laughs> that was such a weird stipulation um, that they got to. And then how they used it in the show was kind of odd as well. But we'll get more into power a little bit later. But I do want to point out that uh, the King Bees will be defending those NWA Women Tag Team Champions against Vert Vixen and Jasmine Allure at Gorgeous, which is the next Mission Pro event. Um, is that Mission Pro? I think that's Mission Pro, isn't it? I thought it was, but hold on. What does it say? <laughs> now I'm going to have to go look. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. They do seem to be getting booked a few places. Well, we did see them at uh we 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 have seen them defend the titles at Mission Pro. We did see them uh they're set to defend the titles at um where were they? Uh they're supposed to defend the titles at uh uh Jazz and uh Rodney's promotion, Dog Pound Wrestling. Right. Right? I think so. And there was some promotion on X that was wanting to do a, another rematch with them and pretty empowered. I don't know. It was one of those. Should we book this match? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't know whether they will or not. Just one second. Yeah. That, that show is not a mission pro show. Because uh, mission pros, Next event is April 20th. And the King Bees will be in action, uh, but I believe they'll be defending the Mission Pro Tag Team titles against Kiana Dream and Maya World. Hmm. Willie Bone wants everyone to know that the King Bees are bootylicious. Well, thank you for sharing, Willie. Not going to argue. Let me see. Boot is right outside of Austin. I don't know who's running Austin these days. But King Bees are pretty well known in the Texas circuit. In fact, they used to wrestle each other. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like I'm very uh, out of sorts right now, but I'm looking, trying to find, uh, trying to find where they're at next. Um, maybe I should have done a little bit more research beforehand. Well, there's no fun in that, is there? No. So, I guess, oh, okay, it's New Texas Pro Wrestling. That's where they'll be uh, defending the titles next. In fact, uh, if I'm looking right now, um, they will be defending the tech, the uh, defending the titles at New Texas Pro on May the 11th. They'll be at the Crockett Cup on May 18th. Um, they'll be in sh uh, Mission Pro, but again, we decided that's not going to be a title match for the NWA Women titles. Uh, they'll also be at ASE Wrestling in Charlotte. And they're both uh, going to be in Tampa this uh, weekend for the TV tapings as well. So, so there you go, New Texas Pro Wrestling. And I do, I, I, I want to say that they defended the titles at uh, at uh, um, Dog Pound Wrestling too. Uh, they were there. I think they did. Now I'm going to look that up. Sorry, guys. Oh, well, look everything up, why don't you? And well, I stay entertained, but I got to do one something, and I'll be back in 1.3 seconds. 
Sure. Okay, so uh, it doesn't show that they defended the titles there, but they were at um, they were at New Texas Pro. They were also at uh, UWW, which is uh, the Ultimate Women of Wrestling. I didn't know that that was still going on. So there you go. I don't think anybody knew that was still going on. Lutez is in the house. Uh, Matthew Underwood said, can the King Bees go up to Detroit and wrestle the Hex, even away from the NWA crew? I just think they should be gatekeepers for that belt. Uh, look, I think the NWA is struggling to find decent tag teams to uh, have those belts uh, defended against. I think that it's 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 a shame because obviously the division is um, – has some bright spots, but they haven't ever been able to keep that going. It hasn't been consistent. And, uh, you know, they def they desperately need more uh, women tag team in the NWA. So, I mean, we kind of got a glimpse of that uh, tonight or uh, on Tuesday night on Power, and we'll talk about that in just a minute here. But um, I, I think they just need any tag teams. You know, forget the hex. Give me anybody at this point. <laughs> That's asking for so much. I, I understand that, but um, why not? Let's talk about power for a few minutes because uh, you know we are the NWA podcast of record, and uh, this episode of Power was pretty exciting. You know, um, they talked about uh, those crowds from uh, Pal Paladin. You're gonna have to watch the footage, man. We talked about that at length. Uh, Mostly, I don't feel like there was anything really negative in the footage. Uh, was nothing that we weren't aware of. Um, but we did talk about it. Go back and check that out when you have time because uh, we did go into it. Um, but the footage from from Dotham, am I saying that right? Dothan? All right. Sure, right? Sure. Dothan. Um, they had a great uh, audience there. There was a huge crowd at that ring, at that event. I think this is, I hope they did a good job of showing it was a huge crowd. This is a photo from uh, somebody took from the live event. Uh, this looks incredible for the, an NWA event. And I think the last time we saw a venue that packed for NWA wrestling might've been the old uh, Nashville fairgrounds uh, for the 70th anniversary show. Cause there was a ton of people there and that looked great on camera. I felt like this was the place for the NWA to be. Um, it looked great, right? I mean, tell me I'm wrong. No, it looked good. Uh, and, and we haven't seen... When the NWA ran in Nashville at the Skyline Studios, they, they absolutely took the crowd out of the shot, which we all disagreed with. We thought that was a bad idea. They did the live event for Paranoia at the, uh, the venue in... Uh, I think that was Tampa or Fort Lauderdale. I don't remember. Uh, and you could see the crowd, and it added an element to the show that I feel like the, it was missing. Uh, they went back to the studios, and they showed more of the audience, but not a hard cam, not a not a wall of uh, fans behind it. But when you go and watch that show in, in Doton, Dothan, Dothan, when they, when they show the, video, the fit footage from Dothan, it looks great. It reminded me of like uh, kind of what what some of those WCW uh, uh, TV tapings had when they were showing them in the arenas. You know, it, it wasn't uh, the matches that we saw weren't exactly a plus talent matches, but you had a great audience there. DK, you're rubbing your face. Did I did I make you think too much? No, I was. I was thinking it was wild they could draw that many people there. It was just makes me wonder why. And that's that's not to be offensive, but in other words, has it just been so long since there was wrestling there that they were able to attract so many people? Uh, did people want to see AC3? And so... You know, they didn't have a whole lot promoted for that, you know, when they actually held the show. So I'm just, I mean, I'm curious. But 
you know, look, they have Southern Six and EC3 most places they go. They don't draw those numbers. And so it's just a little bit of curiosity. Um, James H. Jackson says the team, the signature live events will, will be big crowds. The rest will, will be, you see a tiny bit of crowd in a studio and said they haven't had live televised TV there. I think also it's the fact of the matter is it's an underserved market. You know, Alabama, when was the last time you heard that WWE was in Alabama? And that, and that might be the thing. I mean, maybe there's not many promotions in the area. Maybe they don't get wrestling that often. Maybe and I don't know what that's, I don't know what Dustin's by that, you know, you know, where they, if there's a major metro area, if it's a major metro area for Alabama, I don't know. Uh, it's, I, you know, just curiosity. I mean, they've drawn anywhere from three to 800 to 900. They drew, what was it, they drew in Florida, about 900 or something like that? Uh, yeah, something like that. Just just so for full disclosure, I just went to Ticketmaster and typed in uh, Doth, Dothan, Alabama, and I typed in wrestling. And, you know, uh, nothing in Alabama, uh, April 24th to 27th in Jacksonville, Florida for AEW. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia at center stage, the last match of pro wrestling rock experience. St. Petersburg, Florida, Micro Wrestling, the third, the third event, Bump and Grind Wrestling in Memphis, Tennessee, the last match in Columbia, South Carolina. There's nothing even uh, close to uh, nothing in Alabama that is pro wrestling. And, and a lot of it that I'm looking at that's even close are like uh, mini wrestling and not even like full like uh, WWE events or AEW events. It's It's small. So. I feel like it's an underserved market. This is what they should be doing. 100%. They should be going to states, you know, that aren't getting WWE. They should be going to states that aren't getting AEW because there's there's going to be wrestling fans there. Why not appeal to a smaller audience that might be too small for the WWE but just the right size for the NWA? Yeah. I mean, it's a good place to run. And again, like I said, I knew they've drawn a few hundred, you know, up to 900 in Florida. But this was, I think someone said 15, 1600. And so, yeah. you know, again, you're just kind of wondering where, I mean, Throw Belly may be over big and, you know, they're in, uh, in Alabama. Sure. D- does he draw 700 people? Yeah. And I think things like that, you, you probably don't have a person drawing. You probably have, uh, idea drawing and so that uh, again just curiosity well you know and and i, I mean i genuinely think it's it's you're running an, an underserved market and uh you know if it would have been the united wrestling network or if it would have been mlw or if it would have been any one of these promotions that were like hey let's let's see what they can see what happens in in, in alabama i i think that would garner some interest i don't know how much the tickets were for for that event i don't know why it was such a big deal for that show but it it obviously worked yeah i mean good for them that's that's what you need to do i i wouldn't expect expect them to draw like that in texas i don't know I don't think the building's that big. But. <laughs> I I remember like uh you know thinking back to NWA Houston, which did run kind of near Lafayette, uh, near Lake Charles, right? Um, they they used to do decent numbers, but nothing like what we saw in Dothan, and uh, and I don't know uh, Beaumont, Texas again. I don't know the market. I know Mission Pro runs out there, but I like I'm thinking like states like North Dakota, right? Or or uh, well, there. Uh, there, are quite a, there are quite a few promotions that run uh, Houston area, and they'll, you know, two or three will make trips out to Beaumont. I'm pretty sure New Texas Pro goes out there occasionally. And uh, so, I, you know, and then, of course, Houston gets the big ones. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, it's been said before that the Metroplex, Dallas-Fort Worth, isn't an easy place to draw. And so uh, we'll see. I don't know because I don't really keep up with uh, who runs where, James. On September 29th, the WWE uh, returns to Huntsville, Alabama. I don't know how close Huntsville is to Dotham uh, or Dothan, excuse me. Sorry, I'm so used to saying Dotham because I've never heard it pronounced before that Dothan doesn't sound right to me either. But so, I mean, they, they are getting some wrestling, but apparently it's it's been underserved for a while. You don't get that kind of a, a draw to that, to that arena without there being a huge... Do then, do then, do then, do then. Do. <laughs> that was pretty good. All right, well, let's talk about do then. Let's talk about hard times, DK, because this was hard times, Daddy. Uh, we start off with the World Junior Heavyweight Championship match, the Royal Crown title, if you will. Oops, there we go. Crown Royal. We've got uh, Colby Carino defending the title against Joe Alonzo in what was uh, a pretty fun match. It was a lot of back and forth. Um, I don't, I don't think the uh, Dothan audience knew who to cheer for. I felt like they, they were kind of confused by both men, but uh, ultimately started siding with Colby. But it was already too late. That comes up later again. I felt like it came up the entire show. Well, I think with the tag team champions, they knew. But yeah, there was a uh, there was a well, we'll talk about it when we get there. So, well, I mean, look, this was a title. This was a title match, of course. Uh, Joe Galley had mentioned that Colby had defended that title like thirty plus times on the pre party. We had mentioned that he has defended that title all over, from Cleveland to uh, New York, New Jersey. Um, defended that title in, in Georgia, defended the title in Florida, obviously, um, uh, Tennessee with, with the TV tapings. So he's really gotten that belt around. Uh, and his title reign uh, just just ended. What did you think of the match? It, it was good. I don't have any complaints about it. I don't didn't blow me away and again maybe this was a crowd not really necessarily knowing who's who and who to cheer for it's like they weren't dead but there wasn't just i mean there wasn't even a strong reaction when the title changed hands and uh, i don't know if that was the actual first match on the card or, or not I don't know if they're showing us this in order or not. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of weird. I mean, I already already knew that that Alonzo was winning the title. But I, I it did seem to me like the crowd, crowd didn't really know how to react to it or anything. And I think uh, Danny Deals on commentary did a good job of putting – over the fact that it's a world championship. You know, this is the world title for the junior heavyweights. Yeah. And everything. And so I I was very pleased with his effort of getting the title over. But this is one of those things where, you know, a lot of wrestling people might at least know the Carino name. Yeah. Or they might remember Colby when he was a teenager in ROH or, you know, you know, the angle where he was rebelling against dad or whatever, you know, every kid angle they do. And uh, so, but they didn't know who Joe Alonzo was and they didn't really know how to react to him winning the title. And this is one of the, I wasn't thrilled with him winning the title. Again, I, too many places use their junior heavyweight title sometimes. That's the young guy title. And, uh, you know, so far I've thought they've put the title on two people who were good to have the title on and we'll put the title on two people who I'm not so sure that it was good to have the title on. So, so put a name on it. 
Homicide, good chance, good choice, bad choice. Homicide's a good choice because Homicide's been around, and held top titles in a lot of places, and was the ROH, you know, top champion and things like that. So then the other one was either Colby or or uh, Col- Gary. Colby was a good champion because he at least had the name value. He's matured and improved quite a bit, even from when he first got in the NWA. And then, uh, again, Kerry, never been overly impressed with. I, I do think he plays a good chicken shit heel, but I've not been overly impressed with his uh, entering abilities. I believe the only reason he had the title was because of Dad. And, uh, I mean, not that. Not that dad pulled strings for him to get the title. I think they put the title on him because Kerry Martin, Ricky Morton, you take Ricky around, everybody loves Ricky. And, you know, he kind of turned heelish more towards the end of his reign, everything. Uh, again, young guy, not a lot of experience. Uh, at one time, didn't have much passion. I'm still not sure how much he actually has. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, then the same thing with, you know, what I measure, what I tend to measure in my champions, I go, is this somebody? And there aren't many places that have junior heavyweight championships. But, right. You know, is this somebody who you see being a champion somewhere else? If Joe Alonso suddenly showed up in MLW, would they put the middleweight title on? don't know that they would and you know just other pla- if does he deserve title we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see but you know that's kind of my that's kind of my measure now you have a you can prove me wrong and i'm always one of those that am more than happy to admit that i was wrong you can prove me wrong by having an excellent title reign doing thing you know doing things that will get you to the point of being world champion, you know, where I can sit there and go, yeah, I could see, you know, him going to NXT or going to ROH or, you know, you know, that, and that's no thing. It, if he were an ROH, would he even be in contendership for their television championship, let alone their, uh, world championship and so it's just you know okay dude i wouldn't have put the title on you so now prove that i'm wrong yeah do you feel that it hurt him winning the title the way he did with the with the referee spot and then the low blow leading to the pin no because shit like that happens in wrestling yeah uh and he's the heel. So I don't think that hurts him. What hurts him is the crowd not booing or cheering excessively, but kind of going, oh, well, new champion, cool. <laughs> that, that That's what you're looking for. You know, that's what... That's why, you know, earlier on we saw a lot of people, Willie and others, you know, trash WWE, trash CM Punk, tra- Trash them all you want. Yeah. I want their money. You know what? I see it. You can hate CM Punk all you want to. He don't care. Because he's getting a big check in his bank account and I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can hate WWE all you want. And Lord knows I'm not the biggest fan of WWE. But they had a Friday night sellout. Uh, Saturday afternoon, I don't know if it was a sellout or not, but 16000 for an NXT show. Uh, that was Saturday afternoon or whatever. Uh, Saturday night sellout, a Sunday night sellout, and a Monday night sellout. So... Hate them all you want. They hot right now. Very. 
And so, you know, they're kind of, I mean, I don't like AEW, but there are people that do. Okay. You know, right now they're not hot. They're a little bit on the cold side, but, you know. But that can change, too. Like, it, it's, it's so the dynamic of pro wrestling and just getting off topic here, but. Look, man, you, you give me a, a, a really good Will Ospreay match or, or when Kenny Omega comes back and he's healthy. And Will Ospreay, Kenny Omega could carry that company for the next five years. You know, it just depends on what they do. Well, it depends on what they do. And, and look, I don't, you know, like people just talking about the video are like, this could be the death of AEW. No. I mean, TNA is still around. They, yep. change na- they change names and then change back. I mean, they're still around. So I don't see AEW going anywhere. I could see them becoming like TNA. Sure. Serving a a very niche market. I mean, truth is, even after he recovers and everything, Kenny Omega is not young anymore. No. And his body's beat up. And so how much longer can he do Kenny Omega stuff that Kenny Omega fans like? Yeah, that's true. Young, young bucks aren't young anymore. You know, and with the style of wrestling that they do, that's hard on joints. And so, you know, one of the artists formerly known and then known again as Prince, uh, died he'd had two hip replacement surgeries because go back and watch the old shows where he jumps off uh you know speakers and second levels and high heeled shoes and you know <laughs> lanes and stuff like that his his hips and knees were blown out he was in pain constantly and you know the bucks are people who at the end of their careers i hope they've saved their money and i hope they've invested well yeah because their bodies are more or less going to be shot. And so anyway, that's all besides the point. My point is, you know, criticize all you criticize all you want. There's a reality that's going on here. And the reality that's going on here is is right now WWE is very hot. CM Punk is very hot. And so in in Dothan or whatever it is, Alabama, <laughs> the NWA was very hot. Yeah. But the crowd wasn't overly hot to the reaction of this particular match. And so w- what happened after this match? Well, after that match, we got a... Um... Was it was the uh, it was the I don't tag have notes up, so I don't. <laughs> yeah, I I think it was the tag team match. I could be confused, but uh, of course this was the event that they were welcoming back La Rosa Negra after the serious car accident she had been in, and La Rosa Negra would be teaming with Ruthie J to take on this mish- mishmash of Tiffany Nieves and Rekka Tahaka, and Ooh. you know. In the past, uh, I had said that Re- Rekka Tahaka would be a good addition to the NWA. Well, um, she tried to make a liar out of you. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't make me look good in that analogy. I felt like, uh, you know, and I've seen her in other places uh, where I didn't feel as comfortable with her uh, as she had been. Now, maybe it was, maybe it was who she was working with in the United Wrestling Network, but her matches there looked very. They looked a lot better, uh, but maybe again, maybe she was taking liberty with the talent. I don't know. I can't can't really speak to any of that. But uh, this was rough, man. It was rough, and uh, I, I I like Ruthie J. I like uh, I like Tiffany Nieves. I like La Rosa Negra. The weak link here seemed to be uh, uh, Rekka Tahaka. Now she does have an imposing figure. She's she's a a tall woman. She's very powerful. She obviously. The gym is her ally. She's there quite a bit. The match started with a seemingly uh, problem between Rekka Tahaka and Tiffany Nieves, which I wouldn't mind that playing out on TV later, seeing that uh, feud brew between the two of them. 
Uh, but I will say that Ruthie J and La Rosa Negra worked pretty well together in this match. Uh, they got the W, of course, but uh, not without some uh, adversity, of course, going through the match. What did you think of this one, DK? Was it a? Did you enjoy the match? Was it a garbage match? Was this? You know, what what did you think of it? It was a. It's their match. Okay. I I think based on how Danny Deals was talking, you know, High Sweet Vanilla and other people on is that Twitch, it's purple yeah. Twitch. Yeah, okay. purple switch. Uh, I think there was supposed to be the story of discord between the veteran Tiffany and the rookie Ricky Ticky Tabby. <laughs> and I honestly don't remember her name, so that's what I'm going to end up calling her. Rekka Tahaka. Rekka Tahaka Tabby. Right. Uh, so. Uh, the problem was when Ricky Ticky Tabby was in the ring, she didn't look good. No. And not only did she look, she, I mean, and not just didn't look good from a green standpoint, being green, but didn't look good in that she basically got no offense in and you were starting to go, what's going on? And then... She took the pinfall, right? Didn't she? Yeah. And so, I mean, it, this is where I swear Danny Dios has added so much. I was not a fan of Danny Deals. He's one of those people who has proved me wrong. And because I didn't particularly care for him until he ended up in the announcement. Now, the first time he ended up as a substitute in the announcement, I said they should put him there. Yeah. And they have put him there. And he's needed because he's telling the story. He's explaining to me what I'm seeing. Yes. I'm understanding what's supposed to be happening because it's not as clear in the ring by itself. So Danny's explaining to me what's supposed to be happening. And because of that, I probably enjoyed the match more or was able to get it up to, okay, well, it's there. It happened. It took place. Uh, I guess they're setting up something between between Tiffany and, and Ricky, and, you know, we'll see where that goes. But, yeah, not overly exciting. I mean, not – it was there. I – nothing to overly shit on and nothing to overly praise. Just a little bit more about Rekka Tahaka. Uh, she did do uh, a few uh, in 2021, did a series of matches with uh, uh, AEW specifically. Like uh, she kind of, she was the jobber to the stars there where she was losing to Jade Cargill, Red Velvet, Nyla Rose, Diamante, Thunder Rosa, the bunny, Hikura Shida. Um, she had appearances in Ohio Valley. Uh, she's wrestled uh, regularly for uh, Southern Honor Pro Wrestling, United Wrestling Network. Um, in fact, she made her debut for the United Wrestling Network in uh, during the pandemic, uh, during their Atlanta TV taping, the championship wrestling from Atlanta, where she defeated Heather Monroe. Uh, Heather Monroe would get that win back later on another episode. Uh, but uh, then she became a regular for um, uh, Women of Wrestling, where she went by Lea Makoa, not to be confused with uh, the Makoa, the, the Hawaiian uh, wrestler that wrestled for the NWA. Um, and uh, she was there for a while um, before, again, heading back to Ohio Valley, doing some t uh, matches with uh, AEW still. Uh, before she touched down in the NWA, which was just, uh, she had a dark match last month at the um, TV tapings. And then this was her first uh, on-camera match with uh, Tiffany Nieves. So she, she's been around. She's not, she's not brand new to wrestling, but she, her, she's still young in her career. She's trained at the nightmare factory and uh, yeah. Uh, and to uh, quote Jim Cornette, green's more state of mind than it is. Uh, you know, 
Yeah. Some, some people can wrestle six months and not be green anymore. Some people can wrestle five years and still be green. Uh, no, Matthew, I don't think a third man in the booth is better. I think they get too... The, the problem is that's just two more people to talk other than uh, Joe Galley. So Joe doesn't stay focused on anything because normally they're all talking amongst themselves while there's action going on in the ring. So uh, I don't find a need for a third man. So uh, You, Jay, do you think a third man's better or worse? Uh, no, I, I think I, I kind of like the color. Okay, so I grew up as a WWE fan, WWF fan, and it was always like for me, it was like Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse the Body Ventura. And I always liked the dichotomy of the, uh, you know, the the experienced wrestler with the, you know, uh, wily uh, heel wrestler commentary. So, like, when we have Joe Galley, who, you know, obviously isn't a regular pro wrestler, I don't think he's actually ever had a match, but, you know, he's kind of, uh, kind of gives off the uh joey styles more uh elementary uh fan of pro wrestling as opposed to someone who's competed and then you got danny deals who's jack of trades in the world of pro wrestling i feel like they do an adequate job of telling the story where one guy is always going to root for the baby face and one guy is always going to root for the heel and it kind of again makes it uh a, a little entertaining that even the announcers are kind of playing off of one another so what happened after that match? So again, I don't know if my match orders are, are right, but then we have uh, the spectacular Slade versus Magic Jake Dumas. Uh, ironic by their absence, there was no CJ in the corner of Jake Dumas, nor did we have uh, you know Rolando's brother Rush Freeman. It was just Spencer Slade, no bow tie, no cummerbund, no like hip slapping. Now, Rolando was still there as his manager, and I, I feel like this might have been one of the better matches we've seen from Magic Jake Dumas. Uh, not as, you know, not a, an amazing match, but I feel like he's starting to get better in that NWA ring. I think very highly of Spencer Slade. He comes off of great uh, recommendation from our pal Jaden over at Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators, and that guy has really grown on me as an athlete in the NWA ring, and I'm seeing big things for this guy in the future. But having these kind of matches with a guy like uh, Magic Jake, I think the stock rose for both of these guys. This was a very good match. Um, very little. I mean, there was some interference from Rolando, of course. I mean, that's what he's there for. He's supposed to be that Weasley little manager on the outside getting involved. But ultimately, uh, you know, I feel like one of the bad parts of the match is when uh, Magic Jake had Spencer Slade on the outside and it looked like he might have was getting ready to body slam him onto the floor instead he tried to do like a, a reverse slam into the ring and it looked like it almost took him out trying to do that did you, did you see that one you remember I, that spot? I, I do remember that that was it looked awkward i i couldn't tell what he was trying to do and then it was almost when slade fell backwards it's like i hope that was what they were trying to do <laughs> i i thought like and then as soon as it happened jake kind of grabbed his arm and uh I was like, oh, geez, dude, I hope he didn't, like, tore his, uh, tore his meniscus or something because. Right. Uh, but but it, the match itself was pretty good. And, again, I feel like it might have raised the stock for both those guys. Uh, Magic Jake has got a title shot at the TV title at some point. Um, so that means that uh, he probably will be facing Max at some point down the road, Spencer Slade to me looks like a million bucks. And I, I, I want to see them do something with him. As our pal Jeremy said, he is no dick dancer. So let's see what they're going to do with him well, as opposed to the thigh slapping. Well, one of the things I noticed, it's obvious that Rush is gone. Yeah. For whatever reasons, Rush is gone. And I, I noticed that they called him the spectacular slade yeah the spectacular yeah slade and so that was the first thing i noticed now i enjoyed the match for what it was a premium live event match maybe i don't you know yeah it seems like this should have been the opener yes and uh I enjoyed it for what it was, but this is when we were talking about the crowds earlier. 
I'm wondering how many people noticed that when they came out, the crowd was kind of treating Slade and Rolando as the faces and Demos as the heel. And Demos always been the heel. Yeah. So I mean, that's a reasonable thing. Uh, spectaculars have kind of been faces. And so, and then throughout the match, the, it was where the wrestling style got, you know, Slade was very obviously the heel. And that, DeMoss not so much obviously the face, but became the face by default. Yeah. And uh, so the crowd seemed to get a little bit into it once it got rolling. Uh, you know, the match itself was good enough. But again, you know, uh, I guess this is one of Billy's things. You know, he he wants the fans to decide whether their faces or heels or sees what happens. You know, I'm glad they didn't do that with Cody and Roman. Because uh, <laughs> we all know that's an old thing that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think... I think the match could have gone over more if it was established as soon as they came out. Here's the trash talking heels. Here's the, you know, the hand slapping face. You know, let's go, let's go in there and cheer the good guy and boo the bad guy. And I, I almost felt. I almost felt bad. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. Uh, That's an ongoing joke for the other guys where uh, Jeremy has alluded to multiple times that Rush Freeman is, in fact, a serial killer. You know, wouldn't surprise me. He's got that look to him. Yeah, he, you know, he, he kind of has that. It's always a while. <laughs> no, but seriously, honestly, I... I think it had been established at the beginning who, and I almost felt bad for uh, Jake that he lost this one, but probably I see more advantage in Slade, you know, rising the ranks or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that'll bring us to the last match of the night. And again, this was, I, I enjoyed this. Interviews? What's that? Were there any interviews? I don't think there was. Uh, that's what I was just noticing. It's like we haven't talked about interviews, but then I don't remember any. So I, I don't recall any. Um, and I, I watched it today. I didn't get to watch it on Tuesday like I normally do. So I watched it today. And uh, this was a very entertaining match. Um, you know, in the chat, uh, in, in the Discord, our pal uh, uh, Hebes mentioned how great Ella Envy looked. And I have to echo that sentiment. Uh, those gals looked great in the ring. Um, King Bees looked really good. Uh, you know, it, I, I'm still trying to because we haven't really been introduced to the King Bees as much as we should. Um, I believe Charity King is the um, has the wider stance. If you hear what I'm trying to say, I think yes. Danny B is uh, um, the less powerhouse. I believe you are correct. Um, the match itself was pretty good. I, I like the fact that they had L Envy coming out extremely confident. You know, she's a four time, she's a three time champion. She just assumed that tonight was going to be night number four. Um, you know, Kylie has been really, really good in an NWA ring. So I was excited to see this one. Um, Ella and we got too cocky, too arrogant, too fast. We got the quick roll up on her from, uh, I believe that was Danny B got that roll up on her and uh, got the first fall quick. And about three seconds. Yeah. And it, it, it very much set the tone of the match where, now Pretty and Power had to be desperate. They had to be fighting. They couldn't uh, lollygag, if you will, in that ring. They had to make some moves happen. They could not get disqualified. You know, the, a disqualification is just as bad as getting pinned or submitting because as a loss is a loss. Um, you know, whenever I see those two out of three falls matches, I always assume if, if I'm the challenger for that title, the first thing I'm going to do is go get out of a chair smack the shit out of the champion with it, get disqualified, and then go count my early my two easy pin victories when the champ's knocked out. One, two, three. Okay, pin him again. One, two, three. I win. But that, that was interesting because in this match, they could have done that in the day, 
there was a 30 second rest period between yeah. balls because there were things there were things where there were heels that did stuff like that. Um, so Ella Envy gets gives up the first pin quickly. The pretty power goes on the attack after that. Uh, a lot of uh, co- tag team cohesion between Ella and Kylie. Of course, they were tag team champions. They have spent a lot of time in the ring together. Uh, they look very complete as a tag team. Um, I was kind of shocked that they didn't regain those titles tonight. Uh, Charity and Danny certainly put up a fight. Um, there were times where they, they were outsmarted by the former champions, but never out of the match. Uh, they ended up, um, of course, Ella and, and Kylie got a pinfall in between before, uh, uh, charity got the final fall and, and won the match. Uh, I thought it was a good tag team match. I didn't need necessarily the, the stipulation of a, a triple, uh, a two out of three falls. Um, I feel like that kind of takes away from the uh, climax, if you will, from a match like this. Uh, but they were both very talented. Uh, both teams worked really well together. Uh, the NWA desperately needs more women in this division to make this tag team division work. But I thought it was a good match. DK, what were your thoughts? Uh, well, first of all, I think we can all agree that it was a booty filled match. It was a what match? Bootyful match, a beautiful match. Yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, I think that was very obvious. All the girls involved, and uh, I enjoyed this. And really, I wasn't expecting to. If I'm to be completely honest, I went into this without much of any type of expectation of being entertained. I hadn't really enjoyed their last two matches. Uh, there are times that the King Bees do look greenish as a team, at least. Yeah. And uh, Ella and, and Kylie have, you know, very much got their mannerisms and character and everything down. And so I, I, I was not expecting to like this much match much, but I was really surprised. I, I did enjoy it. I did chuckle at the first pinfall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it it made me laugh, but I think it made me laugh in the way it was supposed to make me laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, in the match overall, uh, you know, there are a couple of moments in there that probably a little bit rough, but overall, yeah, I, I thought it made a good TV main event. You know, yeah, I did too. I if, if, if you're looking at it from that thing of, you know, what am I seeing? I, uh, it was one of those where the fans knew who the faces were, they knew who the heels were, they knew how to react to them, and they reacted to the pins and they reacted to the final outcome. And so, you know, when looking at this versus the other three matches on the card. I think this was the one that the fans got and they were happy with and they, and I'm not saying they were unhappy with the others. I just don't think they knew how to react with the others, but this is the one that the fans were really, really into on this episode. And I really enjoyed on this episode. And so I was, I was pretty happy with what we got. Did did it hurt the women's title match that there was another women's tag team match on this card? Would you have paced it differently? I'm going to say no. Okay. And here's my reasoning. It helps seeing another women's tag team match when there's women's tag team champions. Because that's the biggest that division has ever looked. Yeah. Yeah. Whether the other two teams fall apart or never team together again, almost irrelevant. Hey, here's women's tag team action. And not only not only that, but there are women tag team champions. And, you know, let's be honest now. I don't know what they're going to do, but now there has to be new challengers somewhere. Yeah. So hope, hopefully in this upcoming season. 
tapings. This upcoming season, they'll do something. Well, they, so they they introduced Ruthie J and Barrosa Negra as a tag team. Now, all the uh, posters that we've seen since, uh, you know, for the posters for the seventy sixth in August, posters for the Crockett Cup, we don't see La Rosa Negra and Ruthie J standing together. But I mean, could isn't that an option they could go to? Is is putting Ruthie J and La Rosa Negra? They've already got one victory now in the NWA as a tag team. Uh, they do. They are faces. The bees are faces. Might be a little bit. I'm not saying it's a bad thing because they need to establish teams. But now they need to establish a different heel team. Now, unfortunately, the heel team in the other match doesn't look like they're going to be a team. Yeah. And well, unless, we they, still have- unless they want to tell more of a story. We but, still uh, have uh, Markova and and Taylor as well. Um, Marco, they've been matching Markova with Kenzie a lot. And again, I don't know what's going on, but aren't they both on the Crockett Cup? Uh, There's two different Crockett Cup posters, and the one that I have on here, I don't think uh, it doesn't. Uh, it shows them on opposite sides, so maybe they will be facing off against one another. Yeah, I mean, I'm just. I'm wondering since we know that. Well, let's go back to that. I won't say it again. Okay, so there are the bees in the back. We see Scion and Latimer. Yeah, we see Max. Is that Ruthie? <laughs> yeah, that's Ruthie. Okay, and Markova and Kenzie. Kenzie. We see Thrill Billy. Well, in between Murnocks. In between Murnocks. So it'll be my guess is that Latimer, Thrillbilly, and Sion will probably have partners. You know, different partners and be in there. Uh question, it's never happened before. Would you be upset if if Murnox won the cup again? Uh no. No, I, in fact, I think that would be a very uh, interesting idea to go with because if they win it twice and they still aren't able to snag the tag titles, that it's like, uh, what are you doing wrong? You know, um, I think it, it just adds another layer to that story. Obviously, uh, I think Murnox was supposed to become tag team champions at some point, uh, but I don't know. It, it, it's a good. It's a good problem to have because who else would you put over in the Crockett Cup? The Blunt Force Trauma doesn't need to win the the, the Cup. I don't think that uh, the Immortals need to win the Cup. They're the tag team champions. Then who else on the roster would make sense? And, you know, are, are any outside teams coming in? That's going to be... Now, they're gonna, they make it sound like we'll probably see... You know, like maybe somebody from Exodus Pro and maybe somebody from uh, Joe Cassano. So, yeah. uh OJ. Yeah, you know, I, I saw be that. Jealous. I'm uh, looking for Whit- it right now. Whitman. I don't know who that is. M. M. Beck Whitman. Uh, we all know Adonis isn't winning. I'm assuming you mean El Rito Adonis. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we basically do. And then that's that's one of the problems we've talked about is do any of the titles have serious challengers that we're concerned? And so uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it's obvious EC3, they're planning on him being a long-term champion. Uh, I'm not against. I think he's doing a good job as champion, honestly. It's just, you know, that's that's what you got to watch is the fatigue of, well, I don't care about title match because we all know, he's, you know, he's not losing. And, uh, you know, Roman, at least once a year, there was – there was a you thought to yourself, well, oh, there's a chance he could lose, and so uh, 
it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, at, at least when it comes to EC3, like, I'm not trying to say that I am uh, the smartest man in the world, but uh, I feel like the problem with him, and I said this on the, the pre-party uh, last week, is that he just doesn't have a good rival. And, and until he is, until the NWA can establish a rival for EC3, he's going to continue to be squandered in these matches. Look, Sam Adonis is a great talent, but I already told you, he's not going to be at the TV tapings this weekend. I saw his schedule. He's going to be in LA for two shows on uh, Friday and Sunday. He's going to be in Tijuana on Saturday. So there's no time to build him up. They need to build somebody up. And R Rosville says, like, Richard Holiday, sure. Richard Holiday would be a fantastic opponent for them to build up. And, yeah, he has appeared in Exodus Pro. So absolutely, Rosville. But until he's on the main roster, until he's doing stuff with power, it's kind of hard to build up on these signature live events. Remember, not everyone that's watching the NWA on CW is watching what's happening in Exodus Pro. And I feel like the NWA, as an, as an entire organization, needs to build up somebody. Needs to build them up from the, if it's going to be from the floor up to whatever, they need to build someone up and give this person some camera time, some mic time. It sounds like, uh, and give this person opportunity to grow. And until we see that, I don't think you're going to have a good EC3 run as champion. He's just going to beat a bunch of guys with some value in their names, but you know, he's going to have good matches, but the NWA has to invest in an opponent for him. It can't just be a one-off. Um, by the way, uh, what Poyle Delmar sent me was actually the new NWA uh, magazine um, that was just, I, I think it was released just today. It is the April-May issue. Uh, covers a lot of what's happening at the Crockett Cup. I'm looking at it. It looks really stunning right now. There's articles about blunt force trauma. Can Aaron Stevens take blunt force trauma to the Crockett Cup and actually win it? There is an article on Steve Carino. Shows him as the NW World's Heavyweight Champion. There is a spotlight on La Rosa Negra. Uh, it breaks down the, the legacy of the Crockett Cup. Uh, it talks about... Um, governors what oh maybe that's just an advertisement anyways uh uh more about aaron stevens and, and taking the crockett tub taking his team to the crockett cup there's uh, a piece on misa kate there's a piece on silas mason the thrill billy there's stuff on tom latimer there's a, a piece on kylie page uh there's an article about joe alonzo jack stain i mean this thing is is filled with content here um this month in history, May 6, 1984, uh, Kerry Von Erich versus Ric Flair. A uh, lot of good articles. I, I just now got it. I haven't been able to check it out yet. <laughs> oh, the Governor's is an ad. Well, there you go. That's awesome. I'm glad that uh, getting some sponsorship for the magazine. Hopefully that uh, continues to grow as well. Um, but, yeah, uh, Matthew Underwood says, uh, sounds like the Von Erics are a no-go. I, I mean, it's still too early to tell you who is or is not in the Crockett Cup. Uh, you know, the fact that they're in Texas makes me think that we'll see more Texas teams involved, but that's no guarantee that the Von Erics will be there. Um, and I would I would be stupid to tell you that they're going to be there until it's confirmed by the office. But uh, they would be a team that I would be very excited to see. Of course, DK and I will be there at the Crockett Cup. Um we gotta get Poyle, are you going to crack a cup? Well, me yelling. I don't know. <laughs> but Poyle, Poyle, are you going here? to crack a cup? <laughs> um, you know what? Should I get Crockett Cup Alliance blog shirts made up? Hmm. Of course. Who's going? Give me if you're in the chat and you're going to the Crockett Cup, give me a hell yeah. Shrugging motion. Oh, Poyle doesn't know if Poyle's gonna be there. That's I stupid. want to meet her. You know what? So, so a couple oh, weekends ago, taken with her. A couple weekends ago, Poyle was doing was supposed to have an event out here in Southern California. However, the weather has been so unpredictable. Uh, it was supposed to be in Palm Springs. It was the day before Easter. My wife was geared up to go. She was so excited because she wants to meet Poyle. She wants to talk about makeup. Wants to get some tips and, and tricks from the master. And uh, it rained. It rained all Friday night. It rained all Saturday night. And that sucks so much because, you know, besides seeing Poyle, which I was really looking forward to seeing anyways, but Alex Kane 
former MLW world champion was going to be at this event. And I was so excited to see him live and in action and it didn't happen. I was so bummed out. Are you, are you walking off camera? Should I let you, should I? Yeah, take I got, I'm back in about a minute. Okay. And it was such a bummer, Poyo. And I know like, look, you had to do it because it was Oscars, although it's a great venue, it's an outdoor event and uh, that rain sucked. Um, I, but I can't wait till you reschedule it. I hope it doesn't conflict with, uh, any of the other events. So you don't know, Poyo, you're, you don't know if you're going to be at the Crockett Cup or not. That's a damn shame. Um, really it is because uh, uh, obviously I don't think they have the card, the event booked yet. It's still a month away, but uh, you know, I'm, as we mentioned in the chat, like Matthew Underwood's like, Hey, Fuego the Soul, let's get him there. Yeah, it is. Well, and that's the thing, like that's something that you have <laughs> You more so than anybody else has been vocal about managing a team to the Crockett Cup. And, uh, you know, I know that you do manage a tag team, not currently in the NWA. And I know you're doing managing for Coastal Championship Wrestling as well. So uh, it would be interesting to see that uh, pan out. Well, Poyo, now I'm not asking you to speak for Fuego del Sol, but uh, wouldn't he make a great opponent for Joe Alonso at the Crockett Cup? Just saying. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, of course, uh, Poyo, will you be in Tampa this weekend? Are you, are you flying out to Tampa this weekend? <laughs> Poyo, <laughs> Fuego would make a great opponent for anyone. Uh, Poyo, you are not going to be in Tampa this weekend. That's a, that's again, another shame, but, um, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Poyo uh, is not in Tampa this weekend. I, I'm assuming that just must be a huge oversight somewhere. Um, but the NWA magazine did come out today. And, again, it is available right now. Um, I think I'll just put the link right here. Um, let me pull it up here real quick. Everything good on your end, DK? Everything's good on my end. Uh, all of a sudden, now my computer doesn't want to work. Mm -hmm. She'll be touring Florida next next week with Coastal Championship Wrestling. Are we are we fans of Coastal? Uh, you know, I haven't watched enough Coastal to be a fan of it, but I, you know, if Poyle's involved, I should be a fan of it. There it is. I was just stalling to get the link. There's the link uh, for those of you who are interested in checking out the magazine. Of course, it's nationalwrestlingalliance.com forward slash May 2024 magazine inside. Uh, get the link, download it, read it, print it out, have your favorite wrestling stars sign it. Uh, I might actually do that. That's not a bad idea. There, though there's great photos in there. I mean, like uh, there's a great picture of Kylie. There's a great picture of La Rosa Negra. Um. CCW has great friends from the NWA too, like Bulletproof Troop. Poyo, we'll get you to come on and talk some Coastal Championship Wrestling. Maybe we'll do a watch along with that. Well, that there you go. Poyo, what are you doing next Thursday? <laughs> oh, you're going to be in Florida next Thursday. Never mind. Uh, that's something we can do in the future. DK, I think we're running out of steam here. At least I know I am. I've been on the road too much this week, and I'm I'm tired. What's tired? Uh, Poyo says, we're hopeful to get collector's editions of the magazine soon for that very purpose. I would think, Poyo, and I'm not trying to tell you how to do your thing, but it would be very smart to have just a bare bone version of the a magazine to sell at the live events that people could, you know, purchase and have signed. Next Friday, you're in Kissimmee with Coastal Championship Wrestling. Well, maybe next, what are you doing next Thursday, Poyo? I'll talk to you offline. We'll talk offline. Uh, just to respond to noobs here. So what's the end game for Kenzie Page and her feud with uh, Natalia Markova? Because there has to, there has has to, to be an ending. ending. Uh, no, there doesn't. And by that, I mean it's something that can ignite on and off all the time. I, I, I don't know who noob is or how old he is or how long he's watched wrestling. But, you know, obviously back in the day, uh, P. 
people wrestled for <laughs> people wrestled the same people for years. Dusty Flair, that's Matthew Underwood brought up. Uh, there was all you know, always something going on between them, you know. And so Flair and Harley, how many times did they wrestle? Oh my gosh, who knows? Uh, Tommy Rich and Flair. How many times did they wrestle in Georgia alone? Well, and I think too, like um, there is going to be the title match at Hard Times. Markova did win, did get a title match against uh, uh, Kenzie at Hard Times, but she's still featured on the poster, uh, you know, for the Crockett Cup. Still up uh, featured on the posters for the seventy sixth. Still on the posters for uh, posters for. Uh, that would be a good the- get, Poyo. Look, look, uh, uh, Markova is on Looks That Kills for December. She's on the poster for, uh, oh, no, she's not on the poster for the 76th. Okay, well, guess we'll just have to wait and see. No, and I think, and look, I mean, it's possible somewhere between now and then she'll win the title. Yeah. And then if she wins the title, I don't, I don't see... But Natalia's not going anywhere. Good. I like her. And uh badass with a nice ass, or what was it? What, what was the shirt? What was her shirt? Yeah, ba- a badass with a nice ass, I think is what her shirt said. I I rephrased it to uh badass with a hot ass, but you know. Sure. But, uh but seriously, but if I may be serious for a moment. Now I think I think that you know that can be an ongoing long simmering thing to have. So we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see. I don't, I don't have again people forget Kenzie Page and Camille Russell four or five times early in Kenzie's uh start with the NWA. And so, you know, and she kind of went off and did her thing. And, you know, when, when Natalia's done done with Kenzie, you know, there's she can go back to her feud with uh, Max. And then there's always somebody, you know, new that can come in and do that. Of but course. Geez, it, it's 9.23, so you better tell us goodbye or we're going to end up falling asleep on you. Well, there, there it is right there. Camille and Markova wrestled every other show, if it felt like. Yeah. But we're going to end that here, guys. Hey, special thanks to Poyo for jumping on. Poyo, you're always appreciated and welcome here. Um, but uh, we do have to get going. It has been a long week for me and DK, and it's time to call it a night. Uh, we will be. I will be back on Tuesday with a pre-party course talking about more hard times and everything in the world of professional wrestling the other guys shout out to dave scooby who went solo yesterday uh, awesome job uh if you haven't watched it yet go back and check it out because he uh he manned the fort all by himself and then of course the other alliance guys will be back here next week i'm sure we'll be talking a little bit about the dangerous wrestling gladiators event that happened tonight and of course we'll be talking all things nwa but until next time we will see you at the matches. Thanks for joining the stream. This has been a presentation of alliance-wrestling.com. We genuinely appreciate your support. Would you consider subscribing so you'll never miss a future episode? I'd also like to remind you we do a live stream every Tuesday at 5 p.m. for NWA Power. You can find us on social media at the Alliance blog. And until next time, we are the Alliance.